Hello everyone and welcome to my first ever video in which I will simply share my painting process which uh, favors very crude techniques in order to uh, paint in a minimum amount of time. In this video I will paint this wave serpent. I should bring it to tabletop quality within two hours. So let's cut to the chase and let's start painting. The techniques I'll use will be mainly dry brush so um, you will probably want to have um, non-brand brushes to um, avoid destroying um, expensive brushes um, because they will go fast they will they will get destroyed pretty pretty quickly you just cake it oh you don't care where you put your secondary color because you're just you're just gonna put it afterwards so we just first layer, cake everything, everything you want red and if you go in other places where you don't want it to be red, that's not a problem. Just cake. I bet it's going to be very annoying for people who are like pro painters and are very careful with what they do. I really don't care. And you shouldn't either. You should just go for your results. Results, time, ratio. Nice results for little time spent. That's the best thing you should do because you probably have a, a ton, a shit ton of this waiting for you to paint it so you can play it and you're just generally dissatisfied with what, what, what you've done because you're so slow so here it's easy you just looks like we're done for the first layer first layer done timing 15 minutes okay so now that the first layer is done I'm going to use a huge brush. This one is a citadel brush, but who cares? And just take here, just take a lot of red and just dry it off. Oh, you can't see. Wait, I'm putting it there. Just drying it off. I put a bit of reserve there. It's a bit stupid because it dries very fast. Should put it in here. There. And now I'm just going to redo this. So, this is my primary color. The first color, corn red, is just another kind of primer, so I don't care if it just cakes again. I'm just going to go very, very huge strokes. Pretty much, this is the gritty the gritty look you're, you're going to go for. It looks weathered. Of course it's just one color, there's no gray, there's no shading, which you will do later, so it, it doesn't look finished at all. But you can sense that it's gonna look weathered and a bit gritty. Dry brush, dry brush, dry brush is your friend. And that's it. That's it for um, phase number two. Phase number three is making everything, uh, all of these parts grey. There, there we go. More cautious, but steady hand, and we're going in. And if it goes in the red, it's not dramatic. Correcting later. We're still at an early stage there because with the dry brush you'll definitely go over a little bit the important is to have everything gray no shades of red or black left in those parts same old same old caking everything just not five minutes into doing this during the second layer Already I feel like I'm absolutely getting there. And so 
that keeps me engaged. I don't want to stop. I'm still having this big brush. So, um, I don't really, really expect to go here yet. Not with this brush. I might have left a few red parts, but when I get to the smaller brush, I'll correct that too. Well, I changed the uh, angle of the camera. I realized you couldn't see much with my wrist in front of it, so here, a little, a little change. Um, now, we were, we were at phase three, which is, um, which is going to correct the little mistakes and parts um, that were omitted, like here, harder to reach, and um, here on the edges, um, here, and correct the places where grey paint's been on the red side and red uh, red paint on the on the grey side. I'm trying to be careful. I can feel it. In my way of painting, I'm um, focusing, and and when you do that, time flies. But if you do this from the start, you get discouraged. At least I do. I I really, if I do this from the start, I I get discouraged. If I do like precision painting right away, uh, that doesn't work for me. Going in there without touching the... Steady... <laughs> Never mind, it's easy to correct. We'll just hide every mistake through dry brushing. We'll just... You won't see a thing because there will be so many so many different layers of of dry brush and it's part of the look too it's the part of the weathering so now the correcting is done and uh, what I'll do before shading is um, I'll do a very quick and careful dry brush on the um, on the grey parts it's just meant to give a bit of texture to the model, to these parts. It is ready for shading. I'm going to be very generous. Let me just don't be afraid. It's part of how I achieve the grittier looks. It's just avoid the, the accumulation of ink in parts where you, you think it wouldn't look nice. So you have to spread it evenly and take it off from places where, uh, where a dark spot wouldn't look right. While it's drying, you can take your finger and go over it, just like this. You have to push hard on it too. So you take some of the paint, some of the red paint with you, and so you can create different sort of weathering. I do that to remove places where I think there's too much ink. And um, that's a way to achieve different kind of, 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 of um, texture. Um, I did that on my uh, Wraith Lords with the grey, a lot of uh, black on their grey um, helmets, heads, and then push hard on the, on the head and take off layers of paint and I put three layers of grey each getting clearer and clearer. First uh, Mechanicus Standard Grey, then then administratum grey and then a final brush of white and then I put the um, ink shade and then while it's drying off 
I'm pushing with my finger and take off a few layers of the grey paint, creating a kind of eggshell uh, texture. Yeah, once you're there, leave it to, to dry. Just bring out, like here you start to um, focus maybe a bit more on the edges. On certain zones, like where light would, would reflect and, be, and make the, the color of the hole more vi vibrant. Definitely the edges, these parts here. So now, now that I've done this, it just feels less dark. I'm gonna keep doing this, but I'll uh, brighten the color of the red. I'll add some orange. I'll go, I'll dry brush always going further towards orange. I need it to be very, very... No, almost no paint on there. Now, I think I'm going to go almost completely orange. So here we are, um, just brushed, made it a bit more orange, not completely orange, just just highlighting a bit on the edges with a dry brush technique. Um, but this is, this model is now um, fieldable, it's completely fieldable. I'm gonna just prove it because you can't really say that because there's no canopy and the tur turret is missing, but I'm gonna put them on you're gonna see that it's it's basically something you could play at a beginner level of painting it's absolutely working and there it is low level of detail and there's a ton of things you could do to enhance it but you could play this and you would have spent maybe two hours two hours and a half if you're slower uh, depending on the kind of model, on the, the size and the difficulty of some spots, but uh, in a very short time you can have something you can actually play. Then if you go a little bit further, which I intend to do for, for this one, you've got this. Um, this is simply going more into details. If you go further than this, you can have something like this. Like this is the uh, a fire prism. And I went a little bit further, like a bit more intricate, still in the very same style. So we've got three levels, and this one is crude, no question about this, but you get the satisfaction of playing with it. In fact, I played with this one uh, at that level uh, for three months before uh, finally deciding I would spend the time to, uh, to finish it. I think that's it, so it's time for a little recap. First we did the primary color with a darker base layer and a heavy dry brush layer of your target color. Then we applied the secondary color and did some correcting afterwards. After that a very careful dry brush using a brighter version of your secondary color followed by heavy shading and finally the last dry brush of your primary color going towards a brighter version of it. In this case red going towards orange. So I hope you find this little video useful and um, I might be doing another one very soon. So if you want to be kept in the loop you can just subscribe to this channel or simply go to my blog and click on the video tag. Goodbye for now and see you around.